George, Utah is an incredible place to live, as you guys already know from many of our videos. And if you have done your research or even better, have the right agent guiding you through the process, buying a home here in 2023 has become a lot easier than it was in prior years. Gone are the days of multiple offers and elaborate buyer strategies just to get something under contract. However, you have to be very careful to avoid making these top five common mistakes in order to make sure that you continue to enjoy your home after purchasing it and don't regret it shortly after. Stick around until the very end of this video for a pro tip that will save you money every month. Okay, so let's cover our top five mistakes. Number Where are one. They? Let's go. Okay. Number one, buying a home in the wrong neighborhood, wrong subdivision, or wrong HOA. And number two, buying a home that faces the wrong way. And then we'll cover number three, buying a home that may have future or existing problems with the foundation. And number four, building or buying a home that you cannot afford. And last but not least, number five, not having the right help in your corner. Those are, I would say, the top five big ones. And if you guys could think of any, if you've made any of those mistakes when purchasing real estate, whether it's in St. George or maybe you bought a house somewhere else, you know, a lot of our, a lot of our audience are buying and selling houses or have experience of buying and selling houses in, in many different states, many different areas. We're curious to know what are those mistakes that you have maybe already made yourself? Because learning is definitely in the doing. And I feel like we, we, combined we learn through everybody's experience because yeah. so many of our clients have bought and sold so many homes in their life before i agree so in regards to southern utah in particular buying a home in the wrong neighborhood or wrong subdivision or wrong hoa could be something big because a lot of our listings come well i wouldn't say a lot but some of our listings like when we talk to the sellers the reason they're leaving is because they don't like the subdivision they don't like the hoa um, you know, it could be a motivator. It could be bad enough that you would want to move. So uh, there's a reason why number one rule in real estate is location, location, location. So if you're shopping remotely or maybe you're here, boots on the ground, a lot of our clients come from out of town and they will come to visit for a few days. Maybe they'll spend a vacation here just to get the general lay of the land. It is so incredibly important to drive around the entire neighborhood, see if there is anything obvious, you know, if there is a busy highway, if there is maybe, maybe there's a school and you don't have children, like maybe there's a school at the bottom of the subdivision. And we look out for these things, obviously for our clients, we're going to list off all the pros and cons that we can think of, obviously, is if we were buying this for ourselves, like we will list off any of, and if any of these things don't bother you, at least we disclose anything and everything that we can think of. Yeah. And, and going back to the school example, like maybe if you don't have any children, you don't particularly get a benefit from being a quarter mile away from the school, but every morning and afternoon when you try to go home or go to the grocery store, go for lunch, yeah. uh, it just gets crazy busy and it takes you 30 minutes just to get inside your subdivision. Things like that are very important. And our other big, big pointer here is that you, you're usually during your due diligence period, you get all of these pieces of information that may be vital. And one of those things, if the property has an HOA, uh, there's usually HOA bylaws that are presented to you by the seller, or pretty much most communities here in Southern Utah will have CCNRs, which is covenants and restrictions. It's basically a guidebook for what's allowed and what's not allowed in the neighborhood. Uh, it's very common that our clients have uh, car trailers, enclosed trailers, boats, things like that. So they require extra parking. Some subdivisions will allow it. Some will look like they allow it. So never assume anything. And others will say absolutely nothing allowed or you could park something behind the gate on your property. So yeah, sometimes it's like it needs to be behind in line with the home or sometimes it's like as long as it's behind the sidewalk. So definitely want to check into that. Too. Yeah, absolutely. And another thing that's been recently becoming more like location specific is high voltage power lines and cell towers. I did not bring my tinfoil hat for this video, but I'm sure that many of our viewers and clients share similar concerns. Usually that's something that Michonne and I look out for. And well, I mean, just, I mean, we've, we've gone to showings where we're around, you know, towers for even 30 minutes an hour and we both leave with a headache. And so we've, we've definitely taught clients out of areas and things that they weren't even aware. And we're like, just do some research and pay attention to how you feel while you're around these types of things. So we definitely want to bring as much light as we can. 
And it, it could be, you know, it could be concern for some, not so big of a concern yeah. for others. Ultimately, we'll equip you with information or as, like to, as I like to say, give you the gun and give you the bullets and the decision is up to you. Um, so kind of in line with what we've been saying, the number two mistake that you could make is buy a home that faces in the wrong direction. Um, and there's, Luckily, all the homes that we have owned, well, we're in our second home, but they've both been the right direction. So yeah. we haven't experienced that, but we've had neighbors that have had to buy those shades that go on the outside of your window. Well, let's talk home. about this. So why why is it so important in Southern Utah? I mean, it's we have 300 days of sunny days. And so, especially in the summer, when the sun is just beating on those windows, it's just heating up your entire house. So you want to make sure that if your your home is facing that direction, that either you've got some blackout shades or you've got, you know, maybe some mature trees causing some shade. You know, I, I recently had this discussion with a builder. So many people, especially with modern construction, they say that two by six construction for the exterior of the property is so important because having two by sixes instead of two by fours gives you what two inches more insulation and the builder kind of chuckled and said well yeah but then you also install picture windows that are massive and they take up majority of that wall and that our efficiency goes literally pun intended out the window just defeats, defeats just, the it just defeats the purpose uh, most windows here are standard for uh double pane but if you have Southern exposure, um, it's pretty much, unless you tint those windows or do something really aggressive with shades, you're going to be giving up a lot of your cooling uh, during the summertime. Wintertime, you don't have to worry about it as much because it doesn't get um, as crazy hot here. But then, then again, if, if you have a house with some beautiful views, you would want to have those windows open. And in some scenarios, it's just so unbearable that if your windows are open, it just gets too hot in the house. And then your cooling bill is so high or it's your, your AC can't even keep up with it. So that is a huge deal. Another reason where um, direction of your home could be very, pretty much a deal breaker is if you happen to have a pool or plan on building a pool. Typically, if your home is facing north, that happens to be one of the safest bets here in southern Utah because, and and pro tip, the easy way to tell if you're facing north is if you see Pine Valley Mountain. Uh, it is one of the largest uh, geologic objects here where pretty much anywhere in southern Utah, whether you're in St. George, Washington, Hurricane, you're going to be able to see the view of Pine Valley Mountain. So if you're out looking at houses and you see that the front of the house faces Pine Valley Mountain, Chances are that house probably is facing the right direction. And if you plan on having a pool, uh, sometimes like that would be even more, more imperative that you get the morning sun, you get the afternoon sun, midday is going to be right above you. So if your house is facing north, even if the house is very tall and it casts um, a pretty big shade, you could still be okay just because the sun goes over your backyard and it doesn't obstruct the sun at any point. How about buying a home that may have future or existing problems with the foundation? That's a big one. Yeah. It's it's gotten less prominent over the recent years because I feel like our code enforcement and overall building requirements have gotten a lot stricter, which is good. Um, usually I'm 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 pro I, I support the idea of less government, but sometimes Builders do need to be governed, mm -hmm. and we'll uh, we'll expand on this topic. There's a lot to unpack here. So, all of our soils here predominantly are sandstone and sand, so it's really really solid. That's part of the reason why you don't see so many basements in southern Utah because it's really expensive to excavate down because the ground is hard. However, there are pockets of what's called blue clay or expanding soils, and imagine that if you wedged a piece of clay in between two stones and now you have that piece of clay in between two stones that is essentially a rock while things are dry but the second it starts raining it expands and then you add you know a couple hundred tons the weight of your house on top of it so what begins to happen is your slab begins to move what that translates into is a catastrophic disaster now in more recent i would say most homes that were built in the last 10 to 15 years are generally safe because prior to getting a building permit, 
the builder has to submit soils reports to the city and engineering studies have to be done, which tell the builder exactly what level of compaction needs to be done, if there's any over excavating. And what really typically happens is if you buy a piece of dirt that has issues with soils, there's one of the two ways that you could proceed. One is the more expensive you can excavate down. In some cases, it's like 17 to 20 feet down. So all of the bad soils, all the clay gets removed, and then it gets backfilled with good soils. Then it gets compacted, and the foundation goes on top, and it's it's as good as new. Like It's as if you never had those issues because you've eradicated them completely. Now, there's a cheaper solution for that as well, and you can install helical piers, which then your home sits on typically uh, a subfloor because you have these piers that sit around the corners. And I recently learned from one of our builder partners that those helical piers are actually better in the event of an earthquake and they don't move as much as a slab would. Now we don't have like ridiculously bad earthquakes here. I've not ever felt one. They do get registered. Sometimes we hear through the weather channel app that we had an earthquake. I don't even notice them, but that's the only, probably the only benefit of helical piers. <clears throat> They're generally safe. The foundation is not going to move. However, you always have to think about selling when you're buying. And any home that's been stigmatized can, um, you know, th it does give you a stigma. Like when, when you walk through a house, I would say 95% of all homes here are slab on grade. Yeah. So when you walk through a house and the foundation sounds hollow, that's, I was just gonna say, that's that the perks one people's thing, ears up. Yeah, that's the one thing that kind of bothers me is sometimes when you're walking, you can kind of hear that especially if it's like lvp and it. yeah and it it does sound like a hollow sound and if it's a single story home you're like well there is no basement what was going on yeah and that's really majority of the country most people outside of like this western region have basements and even northern utah basements are very common so and most people won't even think twice about basements it are common as long as it's like a walkout basement on a hillside right there. there's a lot of there's a lot of that so how do you tell if a property has foundation issues? So that's, you know, that's for the 10 to 15 year old homes, anything brand new, there's a pretty slim chance that it was built and there was some major oversight in the builder's part. So if doors are not shutting correctly, if you see any cracking around doorways, windows, stucco around the windows, doors, this and at this point, going to be the first places that you see. So we're, and we're talking about, you know, if you're, if you're maybe shopping for a fixer upper, it happens a lot when you begin to look for these deals. You know, not every deal is a deal, but sometimes we have clients that just that just really want to buy the ugliest home in the block for the least amount of money just to get the bang for the buck. And it's not a wrong strategy. The only thing to keep in mind here is when you're buying the best deal on the block, it'll most likely have to be one when you're selling it as well for somebody else to fall for it or to be attracted to it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like Michon was saying, well, I just showed a home recently where every door was stiff and hard to line up. And even the glass sliding back door, I couldn't get to lock. And I'm like, this home is not even six months old and we're already seeing this much. Oh, wow. Yeah. That was new construction. Yeah. New construction. And so, um, but we are familiar with all the areas where we've seen those issues. So, and there are, I would say you could really map out Southern Utah. If you guys are shopping, reach out to us. There are a handful of areas where if our clients say, hey, we want to look at listings of this neighborhood, that's usually the first thing that kind of preemptively comes out of our mouth that, you know, you should you should look out for these things. It's not a guarantee that the home will have those issues, but it's not a guarantee that it won't either. Um, and like we said, it's not super common. It's like 5%, but. Um, it's, it's, it's one thing to buy a home knowing that that's what it has and yeah. another thing to buy a home, close on it, and then find out after the fact. Now, if you're, if you're looking at something and there is even a shadow of a doubt that there might be issues, typically your home inspector, if you have a good home inspector, and we have, we have a Rolodex of absolutely incredible people. That's what makes our team so strong. We've weeded out a lot of people that we don't trust and kept the people on board that match our work ethic, our honesty, and our integrity. So we always tell our home inspector, if this deal has to fall apart, it has to fall apart. You let us know. What are the red flags? What are the reasons to run? And it, it just absolutely blows my mind that some people say, well, you know, they didn't want a home inspector that's too honest because too many deals fell apart. To me, that's insane. I feel like- I want every disclosure possible. I want, I want to, Yeah, I want to know everything. Yeah. Because this is the largest investment in your life and it's your decision to, to make whether that's a deal breaker for you or not. 
And with full disclosure, we have sold some properties representing both buyers and sellers that had foundation issues. And you could navigate through that process pretty easily. The home inspector would give you a pretty clear assessment of what's damaged. And after that, you could invite a civil engineer that could assess the slab and say, hey, it's done. You need to tear it down, which almost never happens. Or you could lift up the, the foundation and install helical piers. And in some cases, you know, it if it doesn't make money, it doesn't make sense. In some cases, if you're buying a rental property or maybe you, you, you're fully aware of what's going on with that house and that's still a good deal for you, uh, at least having a clear assessment of what it would take to make that home perfect may let you decide whether or not you should proceed. Okay, let's move on to mistake number four building or buying a home that you cannot afford. That's a very prominent mistake in today's market, especially with the interest rates doing what they're doing. So budgeting, and let's talk a little bit about the building side of things first, since we've touched on building. And then we'll talk about how that works out in the event of you're building or in the event of you're buying. We work with a lot of builders and help our clients go from pretty much beginning to finish from the moment we find a lot and all the way until the certificate of occupancy on new builds. Like this is something that I really enjoy doing and Michonne's really good at doing too. And I would say when you're budgeting for a custom build, especially if you wanna build this beautiful home with a view, uh, it is really easy to blow out your budget. And I'll elaborate on the view part. So if you find a lot and land is progressively more expensive right now, and especially if you want something with a breathtaking view, if that lot is not pad ready, your cost of the lot could be equal to what it would take for that lot to be pad ready. If there is any custom excavation that needed, if you need to retain a portion of that lot, bring in more dirt, all of that adds up really, really quickly. Paying for the water. And yeah. So depending on if the impact fees were paid or not, that could be that could be another big thing because um the impact fees are the fees that you pay prior to getting your utilities connected. And that's something that should be accounted into the dirt budget. And then from there, when you go vertical, I would say it is a great idea to have some contingencies built into your budget. So if you were planning on a million dollar build, set aside another 100 or 200, or maybe lower your budget by that much, just in order to know that halfway through that build, you're not going to run out of money because there's absolutely nothing worse than miss budgeting your build and then realizing that you can no longer afford it. Now, <clears throat> another thing that happens with buying existing real estate is we have some folks that have outdated pre-approval letters. You know, maybe somebody got pre-approved when the interest rates were still in the sixes and now they're changing so quickly. We're it's rapidly approaching up. eights. Yeah. And if the maximum of your pre-approval letter is five or 600, whatever it may be, now at the new interest rates, you may no longer be able to afford it just based on income to debt ratio. So it is important to work with a really good loan officer that is available when you need them. And we've, we've worked with a number of clients that brought in a loan officer that they had a relationship with from a previous state. They happen to work for a big bank and typically they work Monday through Friday, all holidays off. But we're shopping for houses typically on a weekend and we want to put in an offer. The buyer seems confident that they want to proceed, but the loan officer is nowhere to be found until Monday or of course, Murphy's Law, it's a holiday weekend, so maybe not till Tuesday. So now we're possibly under contract for two or three days, realizing that the pre-approval is no longer good and we should be shopping in an entirely different price bracket. And guess what happens? After you have looked at homes outside of your price bracket, you are not going to want to buy anything for last. So don't set yourself up for failure. Have the most recent pre-approval, just knowing what you can comfortably afford so that you're not setting your expectations up high and then having to bring them down and settle for something. Because I can promise you that if you look at different types of homes and you go up to that next bracket and then you have to go back down, it's going to be tough to sell yourself on, you know, selling for something that's less than what you fell in love with. That's true. And are you ready for five? Okay, stake number five, not having the right help in your corner. <laughs> so um, when, when hiring a real estate agent, a builder or a loan officer, keep in mind that that relationship 
typically, you know, if, if things are if things are going well, they're going according to plan, you can be talking to that person for about 30 days. And, you know, if it's a new build, uh, a minimum of 30 days to about nine months. If that relationship is really good, hopefully it lasts a lifetime. And I would say here that reputation is everything. We highly recommend reading your views and doing a little bit of background research before you lock into a contract because there's nothing worse than having to do business with somebody just simply on, on, on the fact that you have a contract and you can't hire somebody else. So do your research ahead of time. Um, reputation is seriously everything. Having a true expert in your corner can literally save your bacon. Uh, we do not recommend trusting with guidance of your biggest investment to somebody that is doing it part-time or maybe just started. Um, nothing beats experience and experience and sample size because learning is truly in the doing. The more, the more deals you close, the more scenarios you go through as a real estate agent, as a builder, as a loan officer, the more things that you have had to deal with yeah. you know, in your life. So Cause there's you some could, agents who's like, I've been in it 20 years and maybe they only close five deals a year. And so it's like, it really, right. it really depends like the volume that you're doing. So. You would not believe how many times I get a call from an agent on the other side of the transaction. And this is the ACE card that I hope I never have to pull, but they, they tell me, you know, I've been doing this for 30 years and never dealt with it before. I'm like, well, how many deals do you close every year? And a lot of these agents are doing stuff part time because, well, it's it's the beauty of this industry is that you could truly work to the best of your ability and to the most of your needs. And you know, for some people, doing five deals a year is enough. Yeah. Uh, but it's not for everybody. I would definitely recommend hiring an agent with a larger sample size. And as for us, we'll post the links to our resume and our all of our online reviews in the description below this video. So if you're thinking about hiring a real estate agent, you need some guidance, maybe you're just starting out this process. Um, we have helped hundreds of people from all over the world and all over the US to relocate to Southern Utah since we started this YouTube channel. So if you're thinking about moving to Southern Utah or even remotely considering selling your Southern Utah home, we would love to chat with you to see if we may be a good fit for each other. Click on the link in the description below uh, to schedule a free 30 minute Zoom call to see if we're a good match for each other. So we promised these guys a pro tip. Okay. Now, another pro tip kind of ties back to uh, the location. Mm -hmm. So the, the one major pro tip is there are several utility companies in Southern Utah. Dixie Power is one of the cheapest price per kilowatt. I think it's like number three of the cheapest power companies in the nation. And I will post a link to their website in the description below. So you can see the map. Um, it's everything on one side of Virgin River. So you could literally shop that specific map. And usually, you know, it covers a lot of really great areas. So there's a, there's a good chance that you're going to find something really great within that area. And on top of it, pay about a third of the cost for your power when compared to the more expensive power companies. But even if you fall in love with property that's not on that side, Southern Utah's utility utilities are significantly cheaper than the rest of the country. They're, yeah, absolutely. They're significantly cheaper than the rest of the country. But after you live here for a while, you get spoiled because you learn everything by contrast. And you know, the most, the most expensive utility bills in Southern Utah are still probably a third of what they are in California. But if you have one of those versus having your bill three times less, I'm sure that you'd probably wish that it was three times less. That's true. In any event, thank you so much for tuning in. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Give this video a thumbs up, share it with a friend if you found it useful. And if you haven't already subscribed, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our future videos.